Welcome to the Daily Signal Live. I'm Rob Louie, Editor-in-Chief, and today we're talking about one of my favorite topics, sports. We're joined by David Bozell, President of For America. How you doing, man? David, it's great to see Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations this, on all this. This is, this is great. We, uh, we love coming to you live, and uh, one of the best parts of going live on Facebook is that we get to talk to our audience. So we want to take your questions. Uh, in fact, if you could start by telling us where you're coming, where you're watching uh, us today, what city and state, that'd be great. All We'd deplorables unite. <laughs> well, let's jump right in because sports are one of those, one of the last places it seems in America you can go to a sporting event or you can watch in your living room, and, and you, politics can just kind of be set to right. the side, right? right. But not so Used much, not so much recently. Used so, so what's happened, David? Uh, the little snowflake called Colin Kaepernick happened. Uh, he decided to. Uh, Pitch his fit, as I call it, um, and his protest, uh, protesting the national anthem. How ironic for Con for Kaepernick for not understanding the very the, the 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 protesting of the national anthem. He's allowed to do it and he's enabled to do it if he just took, I think, a ten-second walk outside the stadium. There is an armada of police protecting the very the very ability for him to take a knee. There is an armada. If, if, if he played in the Super Bowl in New Orleans a couple of years ago, there was an armada of National Guard protecting that building. That's right. For his yeah. ability to play a kid's game for a king's ransom, and uh, I just think it's a, just thoroughly insulting the position that he's taken. And the the real I, the the real uh, sad thing is is that even with presented with the facts, where it's you know it's white folks disproportionately being shot at. Uh, or, or in the, in the case of Charlotte, where it was a black officer, even when presented with those facts, uh, Kaepernick and his ilk just dismiss it, and they just want to you know, engage in this shameless self-promotional charade. Uh, I just don't have any use for it. And uh, now I like sports. I'm going to continue to turn into sports. And and it, you know, it's like it's like a musician. You know, if I really you know paid attention to all these guys said, I wouldn't like any good music out there. Right. 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 So I'm going to continue to turn in, and I'll be there one o'clock watching the Redskins you know, on Sunday. But um, it's uh, disappointing to see that the the press is just kind of um, genuflected to Colin Kaepernick. Well, and he's he's also gained a lot of attention, both personally. It's his jersey sales are up. Right, right. Uh, you now see high school football players looking to him as a role model. Yep. Uh, why is it that you know it makes you so upset to kind of see? What we've had play out over the course of the last month uh, happened. Well, because you've got a situation where you get children watching ESPN, um, and they look at these guys as their role models, like it or not. You know whether Charles Barkley wants it to be the so or not. You know these athletes are role models for millions of young children, and uh, you know when you think about what the anthem stands for, um, how it came to be, the the hundreds of thousands that have perished and given their blood for our flag. And to, to sit there and take a knee for, a, I think, a cause that many people, you couldn't walk 100 miles in any direction and find anyone who knows what in the world they're taking a knee for, other than their own self-promotion. He's a backup quarterback that got uh, benched because he wasn't good enough to play, and this is his way of trying to get back into the, main, the mainstream. Yeah, well, it's, it's been amazing to, to see how it's played out, um, and certainly the coverage that has ensued. You have... Uh, media, sports media, national media, cover of Time magazine last week, and right. it's certainly all over the place. But it doesn't stop with Colin Kaepernick. We've had another situation in North Carolina where you've had both the ACC, the NCAA, the NBA pulling out of the state over right. the right. debate over transgender bathrooms, a debate that was started, we should point out, by a liberal in Charlotte, right. the city that later was engulfed in flames and right. riots. Uh, but it seems that liberals are intent on using sports to drive home uh, an economic message to, to punish people for, for just you know wanting to go to the ball game. It's or not what? so much driving an economic message as much as it's trying to punish people economically. Right, right. Uh, and 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 uh, using sports as that vehicle to do it. It's you know it's not enough for the left wing to own the arts and, and, and academia. It's not enough for the left wing to own Hollywood. And it's not enough for the left wing to own uh, the mainstream media, you know, your, your major cable networks. They have to own it all. It's all about control for these guys. So I, I hope that you know, your major sports networks on television start to push back against that and recognize that these guys, you know, maybe the athletes are just 
naive that they're just not really sure what it is that they're protesting and they, they think they mean well. But there are some bad actors in the political space that are going to try to usurp them and use them as pawns for an agenda they may not, know, may not understand. And, and, the, and the North Carolina situation is a perfect example of that, where the NBA has just held it over the state's head. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these you know, Pearl Jam backed out of their concert in North Carolina. Bruce Springsteen backed out of their concert in North Carolina. It's a shame um, that, you know, God forbid, uh, a, a male <laughs> goes into the men's room and a woman goes into the women's room, and the governor of North Carolina wants to just hold that from a business perspective and not force uh, an economic calamity down their, his business's throats and sure. forcing them to make all these unisex changes. And the sports world just does not understand, and they're just having a, 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 an adverse reaction to what they think they're hearing on Madison Avenue. Well, we're talking about sports and, and uh, the uh, left's increasing use of, of sports to send home a political message. If you have a question for David Bozell, president of For America, bring him on. Please ask us now. Um, what have you, how have you communicated to the For America community? Uh, what advice do you have for them or just conservatives more broadly about yeah. uh, what they can do to send their own message? Well, we, um, we've been doing a number of issues and uh, posts on Facebook, Twitter, about the Colin Kaepernick situation, we also uh, promoted John Tortorella's comments when okay. he was Team USA coach of, right. of World Hockey, or the USA Hockey team, um, when he said that if anyone sits during the during the anthem, that they're going to get benched, and that was a quote that uh, sort of the ESPNs of the world are going to admonish Tortorella for. But we thought if we felt it necessary to defend him and promote it, and hundreds of thousands of people engaged in those communications. So keep it up to the best of your all's ability. Get, keep engaged. I mean, the left needs to understand that, and, and social media is that battlefield of ideas to do it. Um, you, they need to push back. They need to hear from the grassroots that this kind of thing will not be tolerated. That not everyone is going to be in lockstep with ESPN, Disney, and the ABC construct. Um, that that it's it's social media is your opportunity to voice that opinion. You know, don't be shy. I mean, it is a microcosm of society at large. They don't want to hear you. They think they want to pretend that you don't exist. Uh, but with social media, they can't, they can't deny the numbers. Look at the NFL right now. Last week, some of the lowest ratings they've had in years across the board uh, 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 ratings, yeah. um, a disaster. Now, Monday was a little bit of an bomb. It was a little bit of an anomaly because of the debate also on Monday night. But all the Sunday ratings and the Thursday night uh, ratings the week prior uh, were all down across the board. This could be a reflection of the Kaepernick situation, um, and we'll see. You know, if that you know, holds the next couple of weeks. Yeah, but people well, are looking for other al alternatives of entertainment if they're not going to get what they feel should be a, a reflection of, of patriotism and a show of, of support for the United States. And, and looking at what some of our, our viewers are saying, despite the fact that they are football fans, many of them are commenting right now that they're boycotting the NFL. I mean, is, right. is a boycott an approach you'd advise? Well, I don't know. You know, individual boycotts, great. Go for it. Yeah. I'm not, I, I, as, a, as a strategic maneuver, I'm not a huge fan of boycotts because they can break easily. It's very hard to sustain and uh, the, 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 the company that you're boycotting could easily say, well, uh, you know, I, I've got all these people buying Kaepernick's jersey, so you, know, yeah, I, you, know, it's, you can boycott all you want, but I've got new fans over here. So it's a tough, it's a tough sell in the press. But, um, you know, like, like Ted Cruz said in Cleveland, you've got to vote your conscience. Same thing in the sports world. You've got you to vote with your entertainment dollar where you're going to spend and do it with your conscience. And, and if you don't want to do it, to, you know, turn it to the NFL – Turn your money over the NFL. Uh, I don't blame you because now it's become a political event. Who's kneeling? You know who's kneeling. Who's you know got their hand over their heart? Uh, in addition to some, I think it's it's tough going to an NFL game now, Rob. I can't bring my kid there. I mean, there's a there's a fight every other section. There's a yeah. fist fight every other section in these stadiums. So it is. Uh, I think the NFL has an image problem on game day. Um, on the field and off that it needs to adjust. Hmm. Well, David, probably the last time you and I, I talked, maybe even saw each other, was I think back in May, and it was in California, and we were uh, chatting with uh, Facebook oh, yeah. CEO yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. That was fun. Uh, social media can play a huge role in terms of how these big uh, 
conglomerates like the NFL or other sports leagues respond because right. they, they closely monitor what uh, the audience yep. is saying. They're very sensitive. So, so talk to us a little bit about what you do at For America and, and how you think social media can play, play a role. Well, uh, everyone knows my father, Brent, Brent Bozell. Uh, red hair, red beard. I didn't get either of those things. <laughs> uh, but uh, he and I started For America with the with help of uh, some close professional colleagues in 2010, right after the congressional midterms. Thinking, looking across the landscape, thinking, man, there was, there was just not a, a real robust conservative presence on these platforms. Yeah. And uh, man, we, we thought, we, we set out with this idea, like, could we create an audience? Uh, was there an audience to be created, uh, to be recruited? And even Facebook, at the, in our early days, would say, I don't know, I mean, we, I think we have a couple hundred thousand conservatives on Facebook, maybe, maybe a million, maybe. Uh, now those numbers are, you know, 60, 64, 66 million self-identified right. conservatives on Facebook. They're fi being found all over the place. Why? Because people are getting more and more confident in self-identifying their conservatism. Um, and, and, and Facebook, obviously the biggest dog on that block. They're not going away despite what all the, you know, the young kids you know, might want to think. Uh, they're going to chew up a lot of competition in, in, their, in its path. Uh, because of because of what we're doing today, I mean, these are the, the multimedia potential on Facebook is extraordinary. So we're simply using you know, for for America, using Facebook, Twitter, and these platforms to make conservatism go viral, and and it begins it really begins with the army itself, and we've rec recruited I think to be the gold standard in conservative online grassroots uh, activism in the country uh, on the for America platform. The engagement level is through the roof, um, routinely we're told that we're you know, among the top engaging platforms that Facebook has. Um, and you know, the controversy that you know, we were witness to in May with, with Zuckerberg and, and the conservatives being suppressed, um, informative session, I think they've taken some steps to fix it. Certainly, yeah. Um, I don't, you know, there's gonna be some folks that are gonna have, have issues you know, randomly with individual accounts. Uh, and Facebook still needs to address those, uh, but I think with the trending feeds, um, I mean, the NRA was trending. Well, well we helped make that happen for for America. We we took their ad that they did the other day, and blasted out. We got eight million views on that thing um, for free, zero money. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. cost us zero dollars to do that, and so we're super proud of things like that of making conservatism go viral. Uh, so that's well, what we're doing. And, and for, for those Daily Signal uh, audience members who are watching right now, I encourage you to go over to For America's page. Make sure you like it um, and, and share it with, uh, with some of your friends, too. Share this video as well so they can hear David's message. Now, one of the things, a uh, point I want to close on here is, and I think a point that your father would be proud of in particular, is that Facebook and social media also give a massive number of Americans and people all over the world an opportunity to go beyond the liberal media outlets that, that filter and, and sometimes don't, well, oftentimes don't tell the whole story. Right, so right. Um, it really is an opportunity. That's one of the inspirations for the Daily Signal, in oh, fact, sure. because we felt that there were stories that were being un, un, underreported or not covered at all, and there's, uh, there's a need to do that. Well, Rob, we have no bias to contend with, do we? It's just us, right? And a couple million people at home, right? And that's the beauty of these platforms. Um, I don't have to... Like, uh, see my news through Rachel Maddow's prism. Uh, I don't have to see my news through Chris Massey's prism or Anderson Cooper's prism. Right. Um, and so, I mean, look at the other day with, with Anderson Cooper and, and the, the woman from, the, from uh, Trump's uh, beauty pageant, where she declares that she is a spokesman for the Latin community, a spokeswoman for the Latin community. And Anderson Cooper's like, okay, I guess you are. I mean, she's a... She said nothing. She, she, she was a, a, a mic drop line from Hillary Clinton at the debate, turned into a rock star overnight by this sycophantic media that doesn't want to do any journalism, real journalism. And they just, they just believe everything, every word she's... That's why Trump's mad. That's why Trump's upset today. It's because you know, she does have a, 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 a past that's not exactly worth the liberal media's time in terms of giving her... The, the, you know, elevating her to that kind of a status symbol, spokeswoman for the Latin community. Come on, I mean, it's just, it's a silly thing, it's a silly title that Anderson Cooper just, just allowed to happen on his own show in prime time. But social media, you just blast right through that stuff.
It's so true, and, yeah. And you don't, have to, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, well, it is. And we, again, we thank you for tuning in today because you are the audience that's helping to spread that message that uh, oftentimes doesn't get out through some of these other channels. So thank you uh, to our Daily Signal audience. Thank you, David. It's thank great you. to have you here. Take it easy, man. Okay. Appreciate it. We'll be back again next week. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a good weekend.